We're so glad you decided to join us today. God wants to do so many things for you and through you, and we want to hear about it. So please share your story at mystory at expchurch.org. And if you want to contribute financially to our ministry, all you have to do is go to expchurch.org slash give, and then select the giving option that works best for you. I hope you enjoy this message. Well, good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord this morning. Are you glad to be here at Expression Church? Welcome to the dedication homecoming weekend. It's going to be awesome, awesome. Before we get started, I want to tell you about a couple of things that are coming up. We always want to make sure you guys know how you can get in, involved, plugged in, and do a lot of different things that we've got going on. Uh, this Saturday, we are having a men's breakfast, men's prayer breakfast at 9 o'clock in our cafe. I'm just excited to get to say that. So the men are getting to meet in our cafe at 9 o'clock this Saturday morning. Pastor Michael Rousey will be speaking. There he is. <laughs> and uh, so we're gonna, it's going to be an incredible time. They always have a great time. So if you are, uh, if you are male and you would like to jo join them that morning, it would be a great time to get to meet some of the men of our church and get to be a part of that. Also, I want to tell you very quickly, for those of you who have little ones, um, we will be having early childhood this morning. Of course, children, you guys are dismissed to go ahead and go to your class. Um, for those of you who have been here before, you know how that goes. But if you have a child that's kindergarten to fifth grade, you guys can go on to class over here to my right and go across there with Pastor Pat. But also, uh, as after, after worship is complete, we have early childhood, which many of our teachers are in the choir. And we have early childhood, we'll be having class, as well as what we call Club 56. And that's fifth and sixth grade. Uh, we've got a special little club for them that they'll be getting to meet together this morning as well. So, are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? We've got a lot happening today. We've got worship. We're going to be honoring some people this morning, as well as Fall Fest directly after this service this morning. So, we're in. Hey, church, can you stand to your feet this morning? Who's glad they're in this house today? Come on, let me hear you. The Word of God says that Jesus is enthroned on the praises of His people. What that means, it doesn't mean if you're in a valley, if you're on a mountaintop, when we give our praise, when we lift up our voice to Him, we're creating a place for the glory of Christ to be seated in that situation. So I'd encourage you today, wherever you are at, wherever you may be, to lift up that shout, to lift up that cry that comes from the inner man. Oh, let's create that place. Come on. Let's hear it. Cross you came broken down, broken down, and there were chains around us. And by your grace, we are no longer bound, no longer bound. You brought me out of the you call me into the light, you call my name, and then my heart came alive. Your love is great. Your love is greater. Your love. 
him some praise. We worship you, God. Yes, Lord. Come on in this place today. It's all about Jesus. I'm thankful today beyond anything we could ever do or we could ever sing that it all has to be about him first. Amen. Amen. Above anything. Can we just in this place right now, can we just focus our hearts, our affections, our attentions on him today? And in this place, can we just fill this room with just gratitude? Just tell him in your own way how thankful that you are, that he has awakened you to life, that he has awakened you into being called into what he's called you to be into. So if, let's just pray this together. Father, we love you above all things. And God, we thank you for this day. And God, we magnify your name high. We magnify you above everything that we could ever think, ask, every issue, every infirmity in this place. God, we just magnify your name that you are Lord of Lords, King of Kings. Oh, we love you. Let's just worship him. In the quiet, in the stillness, I know that you are God. In the secret of your presence, I know there I am
church there is there is no one else for me none but Jesus crucified to set me free now I live to bring you praise there is no one your mercy endures forever and God may our hearts always be pressed deeply into that truth that he is good that you are good no matter what happens yeah. beyond any circumstance beyond anything so father in this place Lord for every heart that feels isolated for every heart that struggles with things deep on the inside that nobody knows about father we just say right now in the name of Jesus every heart that is broken be mended by your spirit by your grace because you're good because you're good and we fear you for your goodness not of your wrath not of thinking that you're mad at us but you are madly in love with us today father we bless you and we give you glory we give you honor and praise for all things in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen and amen. In this day, there's a lot of things going to happen here today, but before we do that, can you just look at the people to your right and left and let them know that you're glad to be in the house of the Lord with them this morning. Let them know that, don't let anybody in here go without a hug, a handshake, a high five. Wonderful. And you guys can be seated whenever. Club 56, if you guys are ready, you guys can be dismissed. Again, that is our uh, middle school class for fifth and sixth graders. You guys are dismissed. All right, very. Well, hey, good morning, church. How's everybody? Did you enjoy worship with us this morning? I did. 
enjoyed worshiping with you guys. Hey, before we get uh, started receiving our tithes and offering for the, for the week, is there any first-time visitors here with us this morning? Anybody raise your hand? If you're here for the first time, I welcome you here, and I thank you for coming and worshiping with us. You're our, our honored guest, and hang around for chili and cake and pie and cookies. That's what fuels the gospel. <laughs> That's where the term full gospel come from. Can you look around today and, 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 and recognize the faithfulness of God for being here? You may see a few things that might be not quite finished, uh, some detail work, and that's coming. But as you come from week to week, you can see every week when we come here, there's something new, something exciting to see, and we're almost finishing this up where, where it looks and it feels more like home than it does now. And we're very thankful for that. We're thankful that y'all are here today for our dedication and, and, and all the festivities that go with it. I'm going to keep it kind of brief this morning. If you uh, are bringing a tithe to this storehouse or if you're going to give an offering, plant a seed, you can do so. We're filling out a check for Expression Church, ECH. If you like acronyms, you can text give to 84321. I'm thankful to have screens back this morning because I've given you every text number under the sun for the last few weeks. <laughs> if you have an app on your phone, it's easy to give that away or your computer. Either way you want to do it is fine. As Pastor Kevin said last night, God loves a cheerful giver and so do we. If you'd like to complete this project here, I'm sure you can get with um, Pam or Pastor Kevin later and give you the total and we'll pay this off today. But uh, if everybody is ready to give, let's pray. How about that? Father, I just thank you. Thank you for what you're doing in this house. And I thank you, Father, right now as we worship you, we continue to worship you in our tithes and offerings, that we bring these to your storehouse so that the work of the ministry can go forth first and foremost. And as we finish this house to worship you in, Father, we thank you for the building project that you have so faithfully brought us through and are bringing us through. Father, I just speak a special blessing over every giver today, every tither, every seed planter, every sower, that you will become partners, financial partner with them in everything that they do in their lives and, that will, and everything that they touch and everything that they have and everything that they are will be blessed from here on out. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Well, welcome to Dedication Sunday. Yeah. I'm thankful you're here, and um, I don't know if you can hear or see all the little kids. There are kids everywhere this morning, which is a sign of life. We want kids, lots of them. And, you know, those of you that it, maybe kids maybe kind of make you a little bit irritable or nervous, we'll pray for you because they're going to be everywhere. We're going to have a, as soon as the service is over today, we're going to be out back on the, or actually it's out front, on the front parking lot, which is out back. Uh, where the portico is, and we're going to set up the whole parking lot. They're actually doing a lot of people out there now setting those things up, so there's going to be chili cook-off. There's all kinds of stuff, and at the end of service, we'll tell you uh, what's going to happen, but we're really, really, really excited um, for the, what we're going to do today because we have uh, some of our the contractors and, and people that um, our contractors that helped do... Um, complete this project are with us today, and several uh, have uh, commitments at their own church, so we um, obviously want them to be connected to their church, but the main thing today is what we're going to do is we're going to honor some of those contractors uh, that are with us today, and um, the, the, the contracting, some of the, co the contractors has just been an incredible experience. Um, the level of excellence, the quality, the, the, the craftsmanship, the workmanship, the uh, the detail um, has just been amazing. Um, we're we're going to work real hard to get the grand hallways uh, floor covering in so we can get the trim up everywhere. Um, as Barry mentioned to you, it's good to have some screens uh, that you can actually see what's going on. We're going to play a video for you here in just a few moments. But before we do that, if Steph, if you could come up and help me 
and I think Ronnie is, I'm not sure he, where he is, but I think he's probably coordinating everything out back, but if you could help me real quick. I want to honor some of the uh, contractors. You just tell me which ones. The, hmm? Oh, good. This guy here, he walked in here with us when there was a, just a fresh, there wasn't just a floor. And he walked in and there was a, a table sitting right over there that had drawings. And um, he said, are these the drawings for the church? And then I said, well, we don't have architectural drawings. We just made these drawings as we go, <laughs> as we go. And he started looking around. He started dreaming with us and, you know, and, and seeing the vision and then kind of helping us see it. And um, he brought a guy in. We knew a guy that worked for him because this guy had been connected with us for the last probably three years, two or three years, and when we were at 18th Street. And he came in and he said, uh, he's going to kind of be my guy here, he works for the company. He said he's going to be the guy on the job that kind of oversees the, uh, the electrical work. So he uh, pulls in. One day I come down here and there's a guy named Jay, that we all know, that's got a, on a ladder and he's running lights. And from that point on, they didn't look back. And anything, I mean, vision, ideas, um, they really were just top-notch professionals. And Trico Electric is with us today, and we want to honor you. And if H.R. Irwin and, of course, Jay, you come on up too with the H.R., if you would come on up, we want to honor you today. Yeah. We're doing all the electrical work here. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Thank you. This is for you. And they have been incredible, Trico Electric. And of course, I don't think that either of the knew the other one was coming today. So <laughs> here we are. Who's next? Richard David Johnson. Junior. Junior. The, the second. Come on up, Dave. <laughs> Every door that you saw hung that was temporary. Dave had two or three days to get, because we were trying to get occupancy permit. So Dave comes in and works around the clock, uh, literally around the clock, to put those doors Larry. in. And Larry, Larry. yeah, him and Larry. Larry. Him and Larry. Rex Stone. Rex did all the floor covering in the, in the place. <laughs> he told me before service, he said, don't, don't be doing that in front of everybody. Yeah. John Barnhart, is he inside or outside? Well, good. We'll give, we'll give, <laughs> we'll, we'll give him two. Rocky Horner. Rocky. Come on up there. Rocky, Rocky, Rocky is the guy that helped raise that beam. <laughs> Stacy Shannon, Pain Expressions, is he here? Paint expressions that goes to show you what he he did all the painting. <laughs> That's it. Okay. She pull one of those out of there. Let me just show whatever. But we're we're giving them on behalf of the church, just so they'll know. Is Legacy Concrete here? No. It says. In Expression Church, an appreciation for excellence in construction of Expression Church, Legacy Concrete, finishing 2017. We're giving to everyone. Well, and I'd say there's so many more that, that played a part from, from people donating glass to, uh, I mean, people cutting down uh, the, the um, poles. Uh, 
Perry Steele, uh, incredible, just came down here every evening and worked on weekends. To, uh, Jerry Williamson with Ross Williamson did all the heating and air here. He's in Georgia, won't be back until this evening, or he'd be with us today. We tried to get Ray Blankenship here with us. You don't know, I don't know if you all know Ray. Ray did the uh, contracting or the, a lot of the excavating and did a lot of that stuff too. And uh, we could try to get Ray here, but uh, he didn't come. So we're going to go to his house after church, because he was the guy that said, he said, you're not going to make it by your deadline. He said, what if you don't do it? I said, I'm going to preach on the street corner down there by the courthouse. And I said, but you got to come. So every week would go by, we were past the deadline. He'd say, where are you preaching? I said, I'm at the courthouse. When we moved in here one day, he stopped in, and I said, Ray, we're in. I'm no longer at the courthouse. you got to come. He said, I'll be there. So we're going to go pick him up one of these Sundays to get him here. He's a good man, good man. His whole crew, just excellent. We were really surrounded with godly people, people that really uh, just did, did what, I mean, we, we built this, this thing's been a six-month project, which when Jay came in the first time, he said, you know, this is a year-long deal, at least 10 months. And I said, I know, but we're going to do it shorter. And I don't know what that's going to look like, but we got to get in because we were paying rent at the city, city hall, uh, plus our off, business offices were, were paying rent, and uh, we wanted to reduce all that, eliminate all that. And so we could get in here. I didn't want the money going to things that didn't produce f fruit, good fruit, and uh, build equity and build people. And so um, it was our kid. Everybody was sacrificing through all this. So it's been a journey. And um, I'll tell you what we'd like to do. Chad, if you've got that ready to roll, Seth, whoever's rolling that, I wanna, we want to play you a video of just our little journey of the last four and a half years. Hey, just want to let you all know we just finished uh, our first service here at 1050 Adams Avenue. Uh, we're excited about being here. It looks like we're only going to be here just a few weeks, uh, the way it appears. Uh, there, was, there were probably a dozen children uh, all over the place, and obviously the facility doesn't hold um, enough uh, rooms for all the children in different areas that we need to have specialized ministry in. So uh, we're excited. So we just going to continue to pray about the doors that God opens for the next location. And uh, it's going to be a journey until we land where we're supposed to land. And uh, all the different people. Redeeming love has been my theme and shall be till I die. Sing that out today. And shall be till I die. you all, but I just had my moment. God is wanting to raise up a, a people that can appreciate the, the passion when things were inspired and created and how they've lost through traditions of men. But God wants to raise up that appreciation, the people that honor and appreciate just His creativity. I mean, We're going to have drums, we'll have probably a choir, we'll have a full band, but we're not going to lose the appreciation of somebody that penned the words to a song that's written in a hymn book. We're going to redeem it. 
We're going to sing the ones that line up with our direction that we're going. His creation. <laughs> Eliminate the pride of thinking the way it was back then didn't produce what it should have produced and trying to abandon all those things. No, we're going to raise up a, a generation that can appreciate all things that God created. In fact, instead of covenant, you make me happy, I make you happy. We split the uh, housework 50-50. That's a contract. And what the Lord is contending for is covenant, meaning I'm not giving you stuff to try to make you happy. Instead, I'm just saying this, I give you me. Two people submit one to another. That's what Ephesians 5 looks like. Give us some perspective there, Stacy. Well, I met this uh, beautiful lady, and uh, I've always went to church as a kid, and didn't really know why my mom was making me. So I met her, and, and I was going through some hard times. I, I got great kids, and, and uh, financially I was struggling. She took me for what I was, and for Christmas, she handed me a Bible. Of all things, a Bible, and I never could really grasp it. I met Ronnie and some other people and Pastor Kevin and man our relationship has blossomed so so huge and, and I'm sure I'm gonna have a lot of questions for Ronnie because I'm on this spiritual adventure with you guys but uh, and Pastor Kevin you're gonna get a lot of text and but there's one question that that I've asked myself and I've asked Ronnie just can't they can't answer but the question I want to ask is will you marry me Will you, will you make me the happiest man in this whole world in front of God and this church? Will you marry me? She said, maybe. <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie. Do that course again. Do that, do that course. Stand to your feet. Come on. You know you like, don't act like you don't know this one. Alicia Keys. Everybody know Alicia Keys? See that course again. Some people want it all, but I just want nothing at all. go searching after the stuff of this world the stuff of this world will be find you empty how many of you know i've been there i've chased after it doesn't happen and all i'm asking you to do is do it you're not going to fail listen to me you're a part of a victorious body of people this is not a pep rally this is something that really we have the goods to back up man how would you have liked to have been the year before jesus came and somebody tell you this message you're the chosen ones you're gonna do this and you didn't even have the blood on your back now you got the blood applied to your back you've got the victorious death the victorious burial and the victorious resurrection already working in your life let's go do this thing what is it this week stands between you and victory and success between now and next Sunday is it your fear of failure your concern and your worry how about you do this trust yourself this week that he's not gonna let you fail and if you're not getting knocked down and do something silly and crazy get back up and know that you got another day to go
That's messed up. So I don't have to go, right? Once he goes. Bang. And, and you think that you've heard God speak back to you, man, trust it. Trust it, you know, because here's the cool thing about it is if, if your heart is to please God, you're not going to fail. We thank you, Lord, of what not only has happened, but what's happening, but what will happen. We bless you. We thank you and we honor you for the goodness of God. It's drawing all men to change their mind into a, a paradigm into a paradigm where they can be what you've called them to be and impact this world that you've called us to impact. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen. amen. Pick up a card on your way out. It's directions to the next place. God bless you all. We are super excited that we are here at this point of our venture. So, right. Yay. And listen, major applause for all of the people who have put in so many hours and labor and sweat, tears, everything. All I got is her and me. today and the, he's saying one word to everyone it's welcome 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 this morning next door in Bridget's dance Academy windows it says pardon our progress and I feel like that's the theme for today pardon our progress it's kind of messy but we're growing here do you guys feel that? And if there are people who have never been here before, extra welcome to you. Extra welcome. We're so happy that you could join us on the first day. And for you guys that are new and this is your first time, you're going to think, wow, it's a little messy. Yeah, but you don't know where we've come from. And we hope that you'll stick around to find out where we've come from. And so the Lord is saying, we're saying to you, ECH is saying this morning, please pardon our progress, 
but the Lord is working with us and the Lord is saying to all of us welcome welcome home be blessed in this place what a journey how many of you have honestly with your hands raised rec- remember many significant moments along the journey like that that when you watched the video you went wow I remember that I remember that I'd forgotten a couple of those places. I think we covered everything except the Civic Center. And, uh, and here we are. And um, somebody had the nerve to say yesterday when they came in here, they said, you guys are going to have to break out a wall and go grow a little bit. And if this guy wasn't so prophetic and such a man in the spirit, I'd have probably said, in Jesus' name, I'm going to have to rebuke you. <laughs> but he's a good man. i tell you what we're going to do right now. And... I'd like all of our board members to come up here. We're gonna we're gonna dedicate and pray. Over every inch of this property. There's probably over two hundred and fifty years of experience in ministry that's up here. Well they're gonna do the math. There's only seven, so that puts some age to it. There's a lot of years. And of our ordained ministers, um, let me give you your names here real quick. We're going to do this. Steph, I need you to come up too. And Ronnie, if you could come up as well. John Barnhart back in. He's still working. He's working. Todd. Yeah, Todd. Come on up here if you don't mind. Just right up here up the front. Pat, Pastor Pat Michael is going to be in the children's. Michael, Pastor Michael Rousey. Bridget, if you want to come with him, you can. If you got, it's up to you. Stacy Pack and Lisa Swim, if you could come up here. Stacy Shannon. Stacy Shannon. Stacy Pack Shannon. It was, she was the one that was proposed in the video. Proposed two. Tom and Ernie, if you could come up here real quick. Rachel's in early childhood, right? Okay. Brendan and Helen, if you don't mind. Chad, you're at the media. You're going to stay right where you are. You're going to pray right where you are. Here's what we're going to do. These are ministers that we've ordained, um, and we're going to uh, commission them to go, here's John, to certain areas of the building or, or the property. And they're going to go and pray a prayer of consecration, dedication of, of ministry up to the Lord of, of, of gratitude and thanksgiving and, and then begin to just speak over the, the area that they're um, going to be assigned to. Um, you'll have uh, John Barnhart and Todd will be going outside. Do you guys, you already know your assignments? Okay. Pastor Pat's going to be a children. Pastor Michael and Bridget Youth. Uh, Stacy and Lisa Swim will be in administration and a lot of the things that are going upstairs. Tom and Ernie are going to hit the grand hallway. Early childhood and nursery is Rachel. Cafe is going to be Brendan and Helen, and Chad is going to do the, uh, the media. If you guys would, go and then pray, and then you're going to text Steph back from your phone as soon as you have completed it, and then we're going to be praying in here, because I'm, I'm going to have four or five of our board members to pray in here while you all are praying and consecrating and dedicating the property and the rooms and the ministries. One thing we didn't show you here, which is significant. We didn't show you the progress of the building. There's pictures out in the the hallway that will show you the progress of the building. Because we're really more than a building. The building doesn't make the church. The building just gives a place for the church. Okay? So we don't worship brick and mortar. We're thankful for brick and mortar. But God lives in these temples. Right? He lives and works through people. And after they come back, I'm going to share that with you for a brief moment. And um, 
and then we're going to uh, allow the Lord to do what the Lord wants to do in here, okay? You guys go to your assignment and then text right back, okay? We have a microphone for them. I've asked a few of them in advance, the ones I didn't ask in advance, I'm not going to put you on the spot, but if you guys could just, while they're out praying for their particular areas of responsibility, um, I'll start with David. I won't put you on the spot, Robin. And if David, this is David Kirby, I'll introduce all of them to you in just a moment. I'm going to have them pray while everybody's out there doing this. And on the, the screen, because this is what comes out of this building, the brick and mortar can house people, but we want ministry, life to go forward out of here, okay? Okay. Good morning, everyone. I remember months, several months ago, we began holding some of our board meetings in this building, and it was completely empty except for the rafters and the girders and the concrete floor. And I recalled as we prayed before the meeting broke that I noticed that the one thing that stood out to me was this vast piece of rock that we were standing on. And it, re it, made, it reminded me of early Sunday school days when I was a child and being told to build your faith upon the rock. And I believe seeing all that's going on, I believe that's exactly what we have done. I know it's what we have done as a church, what we continue to do but you don't have to look far in your life in just the vision that you have to find blessings that God has provided. And uh, just that simple slab of concrete took me back probably 55 years to that Sunday school lesson. But uh, we should be so grateful for coming this far. And the video, Kevin's right, the video just shows bits and pieces but each one of us have our own video in our heads as to what the progress has been made and um, we are just so grateful to be here and um, I would just pray that our journey continues and that God continues to bless us as a church and lead us in the direction that he wants us to go and to take this community Well, gracious God Almighty, I thank you, Father. I thank you for being the, the creator of the heavens and the earth, that you're our God, you're our Father, you're our friend, and you're the righteous judge. So, Heavenly Father, I thank you for how you've worked in our hearts, how that, that we've spoken those things that are not as though they were, and how you continue to inspire us and motivate us and empower us and provide for us in this church. And God, I thank you for each and every individual that's a part of it and that will become a part of it. I thank you for how in the Psalms 139, I believe, says that you have written us in your books before time began, before we were ever born or ever we were ever thought of by mankind. And I thank you, God, for opening up that book of destiny that you've written for Expression Church. I thank you, Father, for showing us how that we can connect our destiny with your plans and your purposes in this earth. I thank you for Huntington, West Virginia, for this region, this tri-state area, and that we can, we can make an indelible mark on the future of Huntington. I thank you how that you've shown us with your eyes and testified in this video that we just saw, God, that the things that, the, just the things that we've overcome, the things that we've endured and the things that, that have come to pass, but I thank you for opening up that destiny for each and every individual that's a part of this. And I thank you, God, for showing us how that we can in all things that we're triumphant in Christ Jesus. And I thank you that there's power in the name of Jesus Christ in this day and in this hour and that we can go forth manifesting the authority that you've given us. So I bless your people, I bless this church, and I bless everything that will come from it in the days to come in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Amen. When, when Pastor Kevin asked me to pray, he just said, pray what's on your heart. Times like this, when your heart is really, really full, it'd be easy just to pull the plug and just pray. Just pray. I'm so thankful for everything coming and going in every direction, our leadership and our building and our congregation. And so I had to take a minute and pray about what God wanted me to pray about. And I think that he specifically gave me two two particular areas within the house of this church that that he wanted me to pray about and for today so if you'll indulge me just in those two areas and 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 agree with me and hook up with me in this prayer i think this is this is just one of the things that's on the heart of god so let's let's pray father i think that you showed me how you have assembled a handful of people in this house with the heart and the passion and the desire to seek your healing. The ministry of healing through the doctrine of laying on of hands, through the anointing of oil, through the praying and calling of the elders, through speaking to the spirits of infirmity. Just like Hagen and Lake and Roberts and Stain's gone by. I think I think that you have a people here who want to seek your true ministry of, of healing. Not, Father, for ministerial trophies, not for any other motive, Lord God, other than to show your love to your people. Father, I pray right now, and I lift these people in this ministry up to you in this house, Lord, to give them, by the Holy Spirit, the fuel of the passion that it takes to walk in that. I pray against hindrance, boldness, lack of boldness. I pray, Father, for their boldness. I pray for that burning desire that they have to see you manifest, to see these miracles, Father, because we want so bad to see your power back in this house, only for the sake of your goodness and your love to shed through this region. So I thank you, Father, for, for miracles of healing, for the gifts of faith, for, for growth, for boldness, and I pray that that ministry in this house grows, that that seed that's here now will grow and it will flourish for healing and deliverance here on the streets, in the hospitals, at the workplace, every, at sheets, everywhere we go, Father. I thank you that you've placed that here. And I pray over it right now in the name of Jesus that it go forward to glorify you. Father, I thank you for the ministry of worship in this house. It's unbelievable to me how you've assembled a like group of people, Father, with your heart and a passion and a desire to worship you, not just talented people, not just gifted people, Father, but people with the heart of David, psalmists, songwriters, instrumentalists, singers, dancers. Every expressive art of worship. Father, I pray over that right now in this house that it grow and it flourish. It's been spoken about this church several times that cornerstone songs will come from this house. Genre changing worship will come from here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just release that now. 
starting today, as we go in that direction, Father, you have placed not only talents and gifts and abilities, but you've placed desires within the hearts of these people from the veterans to the newbies to the youngsters and those desires father you have placed there and i pray that that they will come to pass that the songs that they wish that they could write the instruments they wish they could play the expression that they wish to put forth to you will be able to come naturally to them and again father i pray the holy spirit as the fuel for that in this place. I thank you for the, in both areas of this ministry, these two ministries that I'm praying about this morning, I thank you that you have intertwined us as family. And I thank you for the love that we have for each other. That that will make that grow and be an example of your house in this tri-state area, in this region, and in this nation. Thank you for everything that you have planned will come to pass. Dreams be fulfilled. Destinations will be reached. Milestones will be made. And it will all glorify you, Father. I just thank you for all that. In Jesus' name. Lord, as we come before you today, Lord, we're truly thankful, Lord, for, for your presence. Lord, we just give you thanks. Lord, we praise your holy name because you're worthy of all praise. Lord, as we come here today, we're, we're thankful, Lord, for your, your faithfulness. We're, we're thankful, Lord, that, that, that you minister unto us, Lord. And Lord, as we come in, in the dedication of this building, Lord, we, we realize, you know, it's not just the building. Lord, this is the, the, a building that, that things can be facilitated through, that your ministry can be facilitated through. But, but Lord, we are the church. So this is not just... a a dedication, Lord, of a building, but it's a dedication of a church body. Lord, that we're all coming together. Lord, that we're, we're, that we're flowing in the Spirit, Lord. That we'll, 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 Lord, that we'll carry out the things that you put into our hearts. That we'll f facilitate that ministry that's in each and every one of our hearts to do, Lord. Lord, you're no respecter of person, Lord. Lord, you touch each and every one of us, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your blessings on each and every one of us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit, Lord, that, that empowers us, Lord, that gives us strength, Lord, that helps us in our times of trouble. Lord, we just give you praise and honor and glory, Father, for, the, for not only for the great things that you do, Lord, but for who you are. Lord, we praise you for who you are. Lord, we just give you praise and honor and glory, Lord. Lord, just empower us to, to fulfill the things that you put in our hearts to do. Lord, we just we call a blessing upon this church body, Lord. And, and as our brother was saying last night, Lord, this will be a center, Lord, that you're going to build people up. And that they'll, they'll be launched out, Lord, to carry out your will. To, um, to minister the gospel, Lord, to the, to, to, to the people that need it, Lord. Lord, we just continue to give you praise and honor and glory. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and for who you are. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, you are holy, 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 holy. We thank you, Father, for this place, this building, and that, God, that today we come together to lift our hands and to lift this place unto you. 
I thank you, Father, that every single square inch of this building represents an offering. That all of the people, every single person who poured into this place, poured of their finances, of their time, of their labors, that God, that it be returned unto them, that you have, Father, declared in your word that as we give, that you will give unto us, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I thank you, God, that this place was not a place built upon fear, but a place built upon faith. That truly, God, that the things that were accomplished here, the time frame, the things that, 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 that came to pass, the money that came to pass, everything that came into this place, it was built upon faith. A trust in you, God, to do what you said you were going to do in your word, to bring to pass the prophecies that you spoke over this place and over this people. And that, God, that you showed up, showed off, and showed out in every way to bring this to pass. And I thank you, Father, for every person who poured into this for their lives and that, God, that truly you do return pressed down, shaken together and running over into their lives. And that, God, that this place be made an example. That this place be made a place, Father, that gets you glory, that you bring glory to yourself through it, through the things that have happened to here, that it's a testimony of your goodness, a testimony of your grace and your mercy, a testimony of what you will do if people will but just come together, love one another, and walk through this process and into this in faith and do it all in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father, again, for this place. I thank you, Father, that, that truly everything in here, every square inch, every piece of equipment, every place that we stand, that we sit, every chair, every computer, every camera, every guitar, every whatever there is in this place, Father, has been dedicated back unto you and given to you, Father, as an offering to do what you will and to bring glory unto yourself. And we thank you, Father, for this. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Okay. Ronnie, I want you to come out here for me. Steph, come out here too. All the texts are back. Every play, square inch of this property, every tract of land, every square footage, department has all been dedicated to the Lord. I'm going to have Ronnie pray the, the, the final prayer of the dedication, and then I'm going to bring you just a brief moment of a recap of really what this is all about and what we're about. Amen. Lord, you paid it all. You paid it all. We stand in the new covenant as a new covenant church. And we dedicate this building, this entire building, and this congregation to let everyone and every system and every organization and every neighborhood know the good news, the gospel. Lord, this is all for you. This is all for you. Make us wise stewards that we could use every inch of everything around us and every fiber of every being that you grant us and gift us to the furtherance of the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom that says that no one, no one is under the junk anymore. They're no longer under the past brokenness anymore. But Lord, they today are reaping the benefits of who you are and who you've made us to be in you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, that this kingdom is ever increasing. And Lord, that it is uh, this, let, may this entire house be just a fan to the flame that this entire region and Lord extend our reach far beyond that 
far beyond. Lord, stir our prayers, stir our dreams far beyond that, Lord, that we would not leave one ounce of what you have destined inside of us uh, to leave it within. But Lord, may it be expressed, expressed, expressed in the name of Jesus. We give this to you. We give ourselves to you. Blow our minds again. Amen. Thank you, guys. We'll give the Lord a great big applause of what he has done. I guess it's been about five years, going on five years now, that um, I felt something stirring on the inside of me. I guess it's been longer than five years, but five years is when it all kind of began to come to pass. But I, I, I knew there was something inside of me that was bigger than my, my current surroundings. Anybody know what they're talking about? There's just something on the inside of you that's just unsettled. You just, you, you see, you have dreams, you have visions, you have, and I don't mean like spiritual dreams and visions, you have like real ones. Like you just know there's more in you. And, and, and I'd come to a place in my life where I was kind of real complacent. And um, I got aggravated, frustrated, probably even mouthy, uh, because I was just unhappy with everything around me. I'd find fault in everything. Reason, not that it wasn't, there wasn't fault to be found, it just, what was spurring a lot of that was a lot of what was going on inside of me, because there was something inside of me that was ready to explode. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You just, there's just something, on it, there's just something there. About five years ago, um, I got launched out, and in, in, in the launch, I remember going to preach. I never desired to start a church. It was just wasn't something I wanted to do because I was, I'd been in that for a long time, and I enjoyed the radio part of doing, like we were doing radio all over, like, you know, five states and 25, 26 stations. My book was coming out, and I, I was just preaching at different places and had a, a couple businesses, so things were... I was kind of content with that, so I wasn't going to start a church. But I had been invited to go speak at a place up in Beckley, West Virginia, at a place where they were having a, a, a community rally where all kind of city people were coming together and some churches were coming together. And it was right on the heels, really on the same week, of when I was you know, b released to launch out, whatever that looked like, whatever that meant. And here I was, going to launch. And I went up there kind of in a tailspin, raw as I could possibly be, and I remember up there looking at all these people that were there, and I had a team of people that were with me, and um, I remember looking out at the people going, there's, there's, there's more than what we've experienced this far in life. There just is. And I don't know how to get there. I don't know what it even looks like. But what the Lord gave me was a real a quick impression of when Jesus was coming up out of the water, well, actually, when he was coming down into the Jordan, John the Baptist was in the Jordan River baptizing all of these people. And as he was baptizing them unto repentance, he was the, the, the family of the priest. I mean, he was the, the guy that was coming next in line. He just wasn't in the synagogue or the temple. He was down in the water. He was out in the wilderness. It didn't fit the mold. It just didn't fit the mold. He should have been by 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 the way the scripture re reads and the way it should be is that he was going to be in the synagogue, in the temple with his dad. And uh, his dad was Zechariah going to pass the torch to him and he would just carry on the priestly or high priest's uh, role. However, he, it didn't happen that way. He was out in the wilderness. He was in a different place carrying out the same duties. And all of a sudden, Jesus comes walking up on the scene. And when Jesus comes walking up on the scene, after John baptizing all these people in the Jordan River, Jesus looks up and he sees this man come walking in there. It was his cousin. Now he's 30 years old. John the Baptist is 30 years old. He looks up, he sees this man walking across there, and he goes, ah, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Man, John pointed him out, spotted him, and said, gosh, here's the Lamb. Because the Lamb, the, the priest's role was to spot the Lamb, look at the Lamb, inspect the Lamb, and okay the Lamb. So when he saw the lamb that was now a man, the order of everything was changing. So the way you thought it was supposed to be, if you read that in the scripture, going from the Old Testament to the New Testament, John was changing an order, but he was fulfilling a prophecy. You just didn't know it. 
So it was unorthodox. So, and I, all this was coming to me, and I was reading this on my way to Beckley. And I look at this, uh, Jesus says, behold the Lamb, or John the Baptist says, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. John the Baptist looks at Jesus. Jesus comes down in the water to be baptized. And, and John says, whoa, I, I need to be baptized of you. You're the king. You're, you're the lamb. You're the one. I need to be baptized of you. Jesus says, you don't understand. I need you to baptize me so righteousness can be fulfilled. Change the order again. The way we thought it was going to be, it was different. So there's a series of changes and paradigm shifts and, and switches that look like it just doesn't meet the natural mind. So Jesus looks at him and he says, you got to be baptized in me, John. I know, we're, I, know, I know what you're saying, but you're going to have to do this for me. So John the Baptist baptizes Jesus. When Jesus goes down in the water and he comes up, all of a sudden a, a, a voice from heaven said, this is my son. This is my beloved son. So when he said, this is my beloved son, he then said, whom I'm well pleased. He said, whom I'm well pleased, and he never even had, has, has done his first miracle. He had no ministry at that point. He was 30 years old coming up on the scene, getting ready to be baptized, getting ready to go into his ministry. But there was nothing that happened that would have made what we know as his father proud as far as performing. He never had one act. He didn't do one miracle. He didn't, you know, take water and turn to wine. He didn't do any of that yet. So the father identified him and affirmed him before he had did anything, before he did any one, one ounce of ministry. Then it says, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit drove him to the wilderness to be tempted of the enemy. And I used to think a lot of, you know, you know come on, God. You're, you're driving him and leading him to be tempted out here in the, in the wilderness? To be, yeah, wrestling around for 40 days? Yeah, he, he's out there all, all, all what ha, Well, right before he was, when the water, he came up out of the water, I forgot to tell you that the Holy Spirit came upon him as a form of a dove and remained. Then he sent him to the wilderness to be what I call equipped. You're equipped when you're living life. Circumstances and trials and wrestling matches are equipping centers. It's the best preparation for your next season. And many people are trying to get past this time of what we call equipping because it's a trial and tribulation. If you'll see every trial, every tribulation, every struggle as equipping you for the next season of your life, you'll learn to appreciate the patterns and the things you go through. You won't know it's going to take you out or take you down. It's going to take you in. Right? So he identified him. He affirmed him. He equipped him in the wilderness. And after those 40 days of him battling, he came up out of that wilderness and was released to be the expression of his father in everyday real life. And the Lord gave us a name, Expression Church, to be the expression of Christ in everyday real life. What's our mission? Our mission is to identify. How do we identify? We identify people for the Christ and the essence of Christ that's inside of them. Before they ever even know how good they are, we spot it. But what about the ones that have gone through a divorce and are really been tailored out and they've gone through bad things and they've even caused some of these problems for themselves? Oh, now you don't understand. That's my sister. That's my brother. That's, no, no, you don't. You don't. We'll, 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 fight. we'll fight for you. We're, we're in this together. You hear what I'm saying? We identify them. We identify because Christ doesn't reject anybody. I don't care how bad they are. I don't care how good they think they are. He didn't reject the prideful either. We just love them through it. Is that all right? So he identified him. We identify because there is Christ and good in everybody. Now, we can focus on their problems, we can focus on their issues, we can focus on their past, we can focus on all these things over here, but what really ends up happening is we end up dealing with all kinds of flesh, and the more you deal with flesh, the more flesh you have to deal with. I've said this for a long time, and it bears repeating this morning, is that I've learned that flesh is nothing but dirt, because you were made out of the dust of the ground. And when you're made out of the dust of the ground, you're made out of fl it's flesh. And, and when, the, when, when the enemy was 
cast to the ground. And he, he told him, he said, you, you, you tricked Eve, now he's, you got Adam, and now on your belly you're going to crawl, but uh, of the dust of the ground you're going to eat. So the, the, what's going to satisfy you is flesh. So what satisfies and fulfills the enemy, the, the devil, is flesh, right? And, and flesh is made of dirt. And so I've learned if we go out here this afternoon and dig a, a, a foot in the ground, you get dirt. If you dig three feet in the ground, you get more dirt. You dig six feet, you get dirt. What I've learned, the minute you start focusing on somebody's flesh, you peel one layer of flesh off, guess what you get? Another layer of flesh. You deal with their hateful attitude, next thing you know, you got their pride. And next thing you just keep peeling, and before you know it, you're dealing with nothing but become flesh managers. And what, what, what the enemy wants is you to be so focused and conscious on your weaknesses, insufficiencies, insecurities, and your flesh that you forget, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He's pleased with you before you do anything. He's still pleased with you when you make a mistake. When your world turns upside down or right side up, he's still pleased with you. What do you mean he's pleased? He's pleased with my sin? No, he's pleased with you. He removes the sin from you. That's what Jesus did. And if you understand that you are the righteousness of Christ and he identified you, he has affirmed you, our responsibility is to identify and affirm the Christ in you. And then we live life together in the wilderness. It's called a 40-hour week job sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it's being at home when you're, things are a little rocky. Sometimes it's when you're, 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 your body's not cooperating with the rest of your mind. Or sometimes your mind's not cooperating with the rest of your body. Right? It's real stuff. It's, it's financial pressures. It's marital pressures. It's, 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 it's health. It's jobs up and down. It's back falling away from where you were. It's all of those things and, and then some. And then it's celebrating the good. It's your promotions. It's your graduations. It's when the kids come into the, in the, into the, into the, the world. We will bury them with you, unfortunately. But we'll be in the hospital when they, they come out and we dedicate them to the Lord. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's living life together. It's when something happens to you that you weren't expecting. When you end up bankrupt and you're realizing, I didn't mean to go bankrupt and I, I, my intentions were good. Listen, we're not going to label you as that. This is all equipping for your next place. But you don't understand. I mean, I was married a long time and it fell apart. You don't, you don't understand. It, 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 it just, I, I, I wish I could go back and read. You can't go back and redo. You can't repeat but you can fast forward. And sometimes God puts you on this plane and, and, and you're living life and, 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 and sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. Depression kind of seeks in a little bit and you feel a little oppressed and you're going, God, is this, is this for me? Or is this not for me? I, I, don't, I really don't know. The opposite of depression is expression. What you don't express becomes depressed. So he, identify me, Father, you're pleased with me, he's pleased with you. Even though I, I fell and I messed up and I, I screwed it all up and I, I could have done it differently and it's all on my hands, and I, get up, stand up, get, get, don't, don't lay there. We will get down and lay down there with you as we help you up, but we won't lay down there with you and let you waller, waller in your pity. Why? Because it gets on both of us. Get up. Why? We got life to live. Yes, it hurts. Yes, there's painful times. Yes, there's, there's things we can't explain. And then, lo and behold, there'll be some religious person that will, or some preacher will tell you that it didn't happen because of this and didn't happen because of that. And, and, here, and you got this cause and effect. And I always tell them this every time they tell me this. I hear it all the time. Well, if you have prayed a little more. You had a little bit more faith. I just want to say, listen, I recognize you're not speaking on behalf of the Lord right now. I know you're not. Because Jesus healed a blind man that didn't even know who he was. And he didn't have faith. And I believe in God. And you're going to tell me my faith isn't sufficient. 
I got enough faith to get saved. I got enough faith to stand on whatever I need to stand on. So don't put me in that box. Don't put me in that category. Don't, don't, don't set up, separate me. Don't try to water down what I know he can do for my life. He can turn it all around. He can make it what he wants it to be. And his desire for us is good. So what he does is this. He says, identify, equip, identify, affirm, equip, and release. The hardest part of the whole thing, everybody wants to do something for the Lord. But you can't do anything and be released to do ministry for the Lord unless you let the Lord first minister to you. John the Baptist. John thought by baptizing Jesus that Jesus should have baptized John, which it sounded right. But John didn't realize as the high priest by him baptizing him, it was actually doing something for John, fulfilling righteousness. And you've got to allow the Lord to minister to you. And that first, be like, just like Peter. When they were, Jesus was, girded his, the towel around himself and began to wash the feet of the disciples. And he went to every one of them and they were all just thankful and humbled. And, and I've been there. I know what that's like when the Lord's blessing you. And, but he got to Peter and he says, Peter, Peter says, whoa, you can't wash my feet. You're, you're the king. This is another John the Baptist moment. You're the king. You're the Lord. You're the master. You're the Savior. I know who you are. The Father already revealed this to me, remember, over in Matthew 16. I know who you are. He says, you, should, I, I can't, you can't wash my feet. I need to wash your feet. I need to do something for you, Jesus. And Jesus looked at him and said, if you don't let me wash your feet, you have nothing in me. Peter had another revelation. I've got to learn to receive from Christ before I ever can give to my brothers. He said, wash my hands, wash my feet, wash all over me, wash everywhere. And the Lord, he let Jesus serve him. We're talking about the king of kings and the Lord of lords, master, serving him. He's going to let him serve. You have to allow the Lord, Lord to serve you. How does that look in practicality? I'll tell you how it is. This is my son. This is my daughter in whom I'm well pleased. That's you. And you have to be able to separate your junk from his love. You have to be able to separate your actions, your work, your efforts from his love. And when you can receive his love and recognize this is my son, if you don't get that right and that message doesn't go to the world, We'll have people serving God out of a servant's heart, not out of a son and daughter's heart. Yeah. And when you serve out of a servant's heart, it's wages and earnings versus effort. But out of a son and daughter, it's out of relationship and inheritance. Yeah. And if you fail when you serve as a son, you don't get kicked out of the house. Yeah. But if you fail when you serve as a servant, you never know. Their contract could be cut off at any moment. You could lose your job. It's not a job as a son. It's a job when you serve as a servant. How do you go from a servant to a son? Identify. Affirm. You're pleased with me, God? Yeah, I'm pleased with you. You mean to tell me I know, my we I know stuff about you that you don't know stuff about you, he would say. And I'm still pleased with you. What? And that message, and that as it permeates and penetrates into the depths of who you are, guilt starts rolling off of you. Condemnation and shame starts rolling off of you. Look back and say, where are, where, where? because the enemy would want that in front of you, so you'll know that you have to deal with that to get to God. God says, I don't even deal with that. I deal with you, and it just falls away. So you're now ready for what? Life, to be equipped, to continue on your journey day up and day down, to go, oh, God, some days I'm up, some days I'm down. Yeah, it, 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 I, I know people that do this. I'm blessed and highly favored. I appreciate about you, but today, today it stinks. You're right? You might know what I'm talking about. You, those people, you, they hug you and they kiss you around. I wish I could be like that. I just walk away going, Jesus, why are they highly favored and blessed? Yeah. 
and, and because my day is down. And if you feel down, don't try to pump yourself up. This isn't an emotional roller coaster. It's a spiritual discernment. And what you go back to is when the life gets tough and things get down, I get down. Sometimes I get upset. I get frustrated. And then I go to the Lord in my prayer closet, and I say, listen, I'm your son whom you're well pleased. Right? I don't hear anything back. That's how it works. And finally, I just say, listen, I'm having a bad day. It's been a bad two days. In fact, this has been a terrible month, and I'm struggling, and you already know that. And I don't know why I'm sitting here telling you when you already know that, but I'm telling you anyway. I don't know how to get rid of this moment in my life. I don't know how to get rid of this place in my And the Lord always takes me back after I fuss and, 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 and rant for a while. He always takes me back to, why are you focused on your insufficiency? Why are you focused on your inadequacies? Why are you focused on the letdowns and, and, and what's short? And what, why, why can't you just come to me and say, Lord, I'm well pleased, but I don't understand the cycle of life I'm in right now. And he may not ever answer that moment of your life, but I promise you this. If you can settle that you're his son and daughter and he's well pleased, there'll be a moment in time that the, that, that the life situation that's got you sucked in in a, in a bad place or a hard place will kick you out and you'll be released and you won't even know what you got in your last season but I promise you, you'll take it with you in your next. Your heart will be broken during those times. You'll feel low and how can I get up? You'll learn patience and endurance. And nobody wants that. We like endurance, but we don't like patience. And we go through the process. Now, what I saw that night at Beckley was I saw a bunch of people. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I see that all over I just want you to be the expression of Christ in everyday real life. Not, not fake, not phony, genuine, genuine. I just want you to love people in their mess, and I want you to love people if they're not in a mess. I want you to help them see the, the me in them and identify it and affirm it, and then use all your resources, your influence, the people you know, the things you have, everything, to equip them that they might be able to be released into everyday real life to be the expression of him everywhere you go. That's who we are. It's what we do. It's the fabric and the fiber of our church. Does that bear witness with anybody in here today? Rex, bring me those cards if you will. Here's what I'm going to do. I've never done this before, but I'm going to do it today because I feel strongly compelled. I felt like this last night. It's a building dedication. It's where we are. And as Mike was praying about every inch of the building, all of that, it just kind of confirms. What I'm going to do is we're going to have the kids come back in in a moment. I'm going to introduce you to a good friend of mine. I'm going to have him and her, his wife greet the, uh, the people he spoke last night and tore the place apart. Um, but I want to do something. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes for just a moment with nobody looking around. I'm not going to do an altar call for salvation. This is a different type of service. But what I am going to do is this. I want to receive a, an offering it's going to go towards the building fund, but it's not an offering for the building fund. It's an offering from you. And we've already received an offering today for tithes and offering. But this is something special and different. Now, for the last 90 minutes, you've had a, an opportunity to hear the Lord, be with the Lord, see the Lord, whatever. And many of you have given to the program. It's not all of you have given to the building program anyway. But this is from you. This is an offering from the heart your heart unto the Lord. It just happens to be where it's going to be is going to come here today. I want you to just bow your heads and close your eyes, and I want you to ask the Lord what he would have you to give. If it's nothing, it's nothing. If it's $5, it's $5. If it's $25,000, whatever he tells you to give, I'm not telling you what to do. But this isn't coming for a need. 
Today is not based on our need. Even though we have needs, it's not that. This is coming from you, from your heart. No one's looking around, and I want this to be a private moment. And I have special offering envelopes up here that are colored that we've been using for the last. If you need an offering envelope, I want you to raise your hand. Nobody's going to look at you. Did the Lord laid it on your heart? To, yes. I just need a couple of people. Nobody's looking around. Pass these out. Please keep your head bowed and your eyes closed if you don't mind. Just keep your hands up if you don't mind. Now, if you're not prepared today to have a check or anything like that, and you want an offering envelope to put on there, you can still turn it in, and we can catch up with you this week for the check or however you want to do it, um, or however you want to give. So it's don't, let, don't let not being prepared be in the way. People are still coming around. Heads bowed and eyes closed, and our hands are still up. I see hands around. I see hands. This is coming from a grateful heart, from your, from your heart to the Lord. We have received offerings based on our need and our vision. That's not what this is. For the last 90 minutes, you've either been tugged at your heart or moved and you've seen the Lord in a different light. Maybe the message kind of just jarred you. If it did, I must ask you to respond to him, not to some man trying to manipulate you and some need that we're trying to get fulfilled here to build, and no, that's not it. I see another hand in the back over there. Anybody else? I'm going to do it myself, but I don't have a checkbook with me. So I'm going to fill out an offering envelope, and then I'll figure that out during the week. So if you know of if you have anybody, uh, if, that, if that's you too, go ahead and do that as well. There's one right over here, back here. Anybody else? Hmm? I'm gonna, I'll take them. Okay, you guys can look at me now. If you will, go ahead and fill out your envelope. Brother Jim, Diane, would you guys come up front here real quick, if you don't mind. Brother Jim Delbridge and his wife Diane. You can stand right here that way you don't have to come up steps. I'm gonna give you a microphone. This man and, and his wife, they, they've been with us from the almost from the very beginning. Friends of Candy's, we've known him for a few years. He he prays for us every single day. Last night he came in here and just tore the place apart and prophesied over a lot of people. I just want you to greet the people and tell them whatever the Lord's telling you before the kids come and sing and we have our fall fest here. One of the things the Lord when I walked in today, you remember in Acts when the Pentecost came and all of them thought the guys and gals were all drunk and all, you know, and Peter stood up and said, no, brothers, you don't understand. This is that. And this right now is a this is that moment. That the anointing of God is poured out upon every one of you. You're so blessed to have this place. Because like I said last night, there's a portal open here now. And this is going to be a Jerusalem church. And God's going to richly bless this place. And let me tell you this. By the Spirit of the living God, when Expression Church speaks in love, the whole world will hear you. Do you hear that? The whole world will know when you speak. Isn't that an awesome thing? 
I so appreciate you, Pastor. <laughs> we, cry, we cry a lot. <laughs> we love a lot. <laughs> and his sweet wife. But more of all, Jesus. And he's here. And he is, uh, I, I've run across a lot of pastors, but he's legit. Amen. Here, sweetie. I'll start crying. It's such an honor for us to be here today. And if you were here last night, the Holy Spirit works with me. I, I see pictures. I see things. And uh, I just, as Pastor Kevin was speaking, uh, and when he would do his hands, he kept doing his hands like this. It was just like golden seeds were just coming out of his hands. And I saw a garden planted and and life was just springing up. All these different ministries. Uh, I saw a pancake ministry, a, a, a Harley bike ministry, uh, a dance ministry. <laughs> just, uh, it was just a blessing and I could just see those plants coming up and they were so green and so beautiful. And we're just blessed to be here and God's blessings on each and every one. There's some mighty, mighty sweet people, as we say in Alabama, where I grew up. <laughs> and we're just blessed and honored to be here. Let me tell you just one more thing there. I see a storm coming. Now I say, oh, no, I don't want a storm. I see a storm coming. But the clouds are gold. And it's raining diamonds. You're so blessed. All these little fellows and girls, look at that. Isn't that a new young man? It's so awesome. Thank you for having us, and Pastor, thank you for having us. It's such a blessing to our heart. You're a blessing to us. We're going to bring all the kids up. There's a bunch of them. Do we have a basket or do we have, we're going to pass the bag? Let's do that. Are you all ready to, to, to put your offering in? Let's do it. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. God, I, I, I'm just honored to stand before this people and before you. And graciously say thank you. Lord, you've been faithful the whole journey, and I know you'll be faithful all the way through the end. We bless you, and I bless these people, and I bless the offering that they give. Nothing was done out of coercion or nothing done out of manipulation. This was not even out of a need or a vision, God. It was all based on from their heart. I bless them as they bless you with their offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Who? Amen. What a wonderful day. Amen? It's been awesome. awesome. We are getting ready. Uh, this day is just beginning. Uh, we would love everyone here to stay for at least uh, an hour or so uh, here for our Fall Fest. Um, we have uh, hot dogs. We have uh, soups and chilies uh, made by uh, uh, the people that you're surrounded by right now. We have games for kids to have fun with out in the parking lot. It would be really awesome. Brynn, tell them anything else? In addition to the soup cook-off, we're going to have some fall desserts for everyone. Enjoy that. Scraggle Pop is set up. Uh, we want you all to have fun. We've got cornhole and can jam for those of you all who have enjoyed that all summer at our expression parties. But without any further ado, this Expression Kids is ready to welcome Expression Kids. you. If 
you ever find yourself lost in the dark and you can't see, I'll be the light to guide you. Find out what we're made of And we are called to help our friends in need You can count on me like One, two, three, I'll be there And I know when I need it I can count on you like Four, three, two, you'll be there what friends are supposed to do, oh yeah. Stand with me for just a moment. We're going to dismiss. You all were amazing. All right, Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, this wonderful occasion we've had the last two days, the journey that we've placed us on. We bless our children. We bless the kids' ministry. We bless all the people that invest in our children. We thank you, Lord, that we identify, we affirm, we equip, and one day they're going to be released into the passion and the calling that you placed in their life. So, Father, as we move and transition to our festival out back, our fall fest, we bless the food, the activities, and all the fellowship, and we do it all in your name, in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. God bless you all. We'll see you out back, out front. <laughs>